In the case of static, the sigma fx0, sigma fy0 and sigma fz0. So pressure will not change along the x-axis, therefore del p by del x equal to 0. Pressure will not change along the y-axis, so del p by del y equal to 0. Pressure will change only along the z-axis and is given by del p by del z. It's same as minus rho g is called as hydrostatic law. So x-axis and y-axis here contribute your horizontal plane. This is must for fluid statics and z is vertical axis. So x and y together will form a horizontal plane and the pressure at any point in this plane is always equals to constant because we have del p by del x equal to 0 and del p by del y equal to 0. But if this plane will change along the z axis then the pressure will does changes. Hence we have a hydrostatic law dp by dz equal to minus rho g. Using this formula you can calculate all problems of manometers. Just remember the trick here. Take any reference plane. Normally you select the reference plane where the level changes and then write pressure equal to minus rho gh if you are moving above the reference plane and if you are moving below the reference plane then you write pressure equal to rho gh this time pressure is gauge pressure so this formula is purely applicable to liquids only so above reference plane use negative sign below reference plane use positive sign we have other pressure also that is called as mechanical pressure mechanical pressure is given as weight divided by area and third type of pressure we have due to molecular action in gases is given by PV equal to MRT. This is very useful for gases. But you can add the pressure whether it's a liquid or gases or due to mechanical pressure. So in the last equation we can calculate density which is defined as mass upon volume. So we have density equal to mass upon volume which is P by RT. In case of air density is a strong function of pressure and temperature alone. So there is a continuous variation of temperature and pressure in the atmosphere. So we can calculate the pressure and temperature at any altitude. Let's say this is a sea level. We have a stratosphere up to radius of 10 km. There is uniform temperature lapse rate. The temperature at any altitude Z is given as T0 minus lambda multiplied by Z where T0 is called as sea surface temperature. Lambda is called here a temperature lapse rate which is assumed to be constant and is normally taken as 6.5 Kelvin per kilometer. It means that if your height will change by 1 kilometer, temperature is dropped by 6.5 Kelvin. Temperature of sea level, if not given, you can take at 300 Kelvin. The sea surface temperature will not change. So if we differentiate T equal to T0 minus lambda Z, we'll get dT equals to minus lambda times dz. Even lambda is also constant. So because of dT is a strong function of dz, we can modify our equation of dP by dz. So we have dz equals to minus of dt by lambda. Now in this equation, we can replace rho as p by rt. dz is also replaced by dt by lambda. We can calculate the pressure at any altitude. Up to 10 km, the equation hold true. Is minus dp. dz is dt by lambda. dt by lambda. And rho in this equation is replaced as p by rt. So it is p by rt multiplied by g. We are left with one minus sign here. So minus sign is get cancelled on both sides. And this is a variable separable form. We have dp by p. And we can rearrange the rest term as dt by t g by r lambda. Now this equation you can integrate. Because g r lambda is a constant value. So at sea surface your pressure is p0. Remember to take absolute pressure. Because we are in a thermodynamics equation now. Temperature at sea level is p0. In this particular you have to take care about the absolute pressure. Because one of the thermodynamic equations we are use here. P0 if not given you can take it 101.325 kilopascal. So if we integrate this we get ln of P into G by R lambda ln of T which can be written as P upon P0 equal to T upon T0 to the power G by R lambda. And here you can find out the constant G R lambda. So G upon R lambda we can calculate as G is equals to 9.81. R is a gas constant for air is 287. Lambda you have to take in a Kelvin per meter is 6.5 10 to the power minus 3. If you solve this equation you will get constant equal to 5.28. So using this equation you can calculate pressure and temperature at any altitude. But it is restricted up to 10 km only. After that temperature will change drastically. And the equation will not hold up to stratosphere. Then we have a forces on plane surfaces. So we have only one formula is rho into g into h bar into area where h bar is the distance of centroid from free surface level. Position of center of pressure from free surface 
which is h bar plus moment of inertia by the sin total axis multiplied by sin square theta upon a h bar. Right hand side is second term is positive. So ACP is always greater than h bar. It means that the center of pressure will lie always below the center of gravity except theta equal to zero. Solving the problem, you first draw the edge view. Second step, locate your CG position on edge view. Third step, measure the distance of CG from free surface level. That will give you value of H bar. And then you can calculate force and SCP. In this equation, theta is the angle made by the edge view and not by the true shape. So always remember to draw the edge view and then measure the angle with the free surface level. For cut surface, that is the cut surface means which has, doesn't have any thickness. Since it has a negligible thickness, the volume displaced by this cut surface will be zero. So buoyant force will not come in picture. So what are the cut surface you are given? Like this and we have a solid wall here and solid wall here and we have a liquid on this side. So this liquid will always exert a force in this direction and this force you can resolve into two component. One is horizontal and one is vertically downward. So we, this component is called as FH and this component is called as FV. FH is called FH is given as rho multiplied by g multiplied by h bar multiplied by area but area is projected. So on projected area you have to locate CG and then you have to measure h bar. Fe is equals to rho multiplied by g multiplied by whole volume which is above the gate. Now this time the what liquid is present above the gate. So vertical force will act downward and horizontal force will act rightward as per this figure. And if the gate will not have hold any water above it for this figure this one is solid wall and this one is also plain surface and this time water is present below the gate up to this level. This time the force exerted on this side will be resolved into two component. Magnitude of the horizontal force will remain same. Only thing that the direction will change. Even the formula for Fe will also hold same. Recall this. This is the volume above the gate. That is this cross section. This volume you have to calculate as cross section area multiplied by width. This time this is the volume which is above the gate which is the rectangle minus the quarter circle and this time the vertical force will act upward and the horizontal force will act leftward according to the pressure direction. So this volume plus the volume of square minus the volume of this square minus the volume of quarter circle will give hatch area whereas in this case this rectangle plus quarter circle will give the volume above the gate.